This is Michaela McLean, and you're listening to Beauty by Design. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Uh, It is time to talk about our next gate. And the really cool thing is, is that this is the the beginning again. I started last year, gate 25. Um, So here we are. And that's kind of exciting for me. So this is, I guess, technically, we're going to call this season two. I'm not going to stop talking about the gates because I think it's really valuable, um, you know, to to continue to go through and refine. Like I'm, I'm obviously including a lot more information in the in the gate episodes than I was when I first started it because I don't know. Like I'm like it's here for people need it. In the beginning, I was like I'm going to keep this super super simple, you know, and now I'm like eh. I mean, for goodness sakes, I'm a line one. Like, I want all the details. So, um, and you know what? It's still not all the details. That's that's the funny thing. But I just want to. I want to have quite a bit out. Um, for for specific reasons. And actually, when people work one on one with me, I follow up with them and I give them a whole list of specific episodes and why to listen to them. So it basically kind of continues your. Um, session with me, you know, and you can kind of deep dive. But anyway, um, so before we get into it, just want to mention a couple of things. One, um, and there's a new little thing that I'm going to talk about or or start new little episodes I'm going to start including, which I'm calling beauty breathing. I've recorded some little meditations, but these will be a little quickie. Um, my idea is to keep these to like five minutes. And it really does tie into the specific, um, I almost said gene key, the specific gait or gene key uh, and breathing. And I think they're going to be fun um, versus just doing strictly the meditation. So they're kind of like mini meditations, if you will. Um, and while, they're, while we're on that subject, you know, my yoga nidra, energetic beauty sleep for clear skin. There's more coming. There's another one that's kind of just been sitting here waiting in the wings. And I've just needed to get time to do to do other things because I have just wrapped up my golden experience guide doing a human design for, well, it's really about the energetics energetics of your marketing. We haven't settled on what we're going to call it yet for estheticians. Um, So that is coming in now less than a month. I'm very excited about that. So you're definitely going to hear me talk about it as time rolls on and we gets closer to releasing it. Um, And of course, you know, there's my $11 $11 or type master classes, which that's the prerequisite to working with me one-on-one. So if one-on-one interests you, again, booking is very limited. I have so many things that I'm working on. I'm like, how much can I juggle all at the same time? So only a couple of spots each week um, that I have. Um, so if that's, if you're, if you're looking for that, you can still schedule with me at this time. All the links will be show notes, Instagram bio, and you can follow me over at Michaela McLean on Instagram, um, to keep up with everything. So let's get on to the episode. (laughs) And as always, my little reminder, don't try to understand this at the mental level. It's about the sound current singing into your cells, like good skincare. So tonight we are moving from 36, gate 36, my sun gate into gate 25. This is a bridge gate. This is the very end of Pisces and the beginning of Aries season, this this particular one. And it's located in the G center. It's part of the individual centering circuitry. So it's individual and then part of a sub-circuit called the, the centering circuitry. So people with individual circuitry have this deep inner knowing that they're, you know, here to be true to themselves, which leads to mutation, evolution, and positive change in the world. And then the centering circuit is even more specific than that, but I'll leave that till a little bit later in the episode and we'll, we'll talk more about that. It's very special to me. So starting with the center itself, the G center gates, they all revolve around themes of love, identity, and direction. And it's basically the home to the magnetic monopole, which is a one-way magnet that draws everything loving and beautiful our way. So gate 25 is known as innocence, the gate of the spirit of the self. And this gate is about universal love and retaining innocence despite circumstances. That's the traditional um, keynote there. 
So to me, 25, simply, very simply put, is God is love. That's it. We get in the episode right there. <laughs> but um, we're not going to. We're going we're gonna to get into everything. So the low expression of gate 25 is really like this being closed off, this constriction of the heart center, distant, disconnected. It's conditional love. It's also not loving ourselves. It is as like this small part, understanding that you're just like a small part of the whole. And I don't know, like the the high expression, I, I love this, you know, spoiler, I have this gate. I love this gate so much, like so much. Um, it's such a beautiful energy in the chart. It's the true embodiment of like this unconditional love of being love, right? It's about having an innocent and trusting nature that isn't like all wrapped up in ego, but it's deeply surrendered to the divine. It's such a magical, mystical gate with the ability to heal the self and others simply through the power of love. And the the gift, you know, here is acceptance of life, of, of the self, of others, um, living in each moment, you know, in the higher self without any agenda or expectations and shining your inner light of love brightly for for everyone to see without discrimination and 25 is the gate of like the priest or the priestess the shaman is transcendent universal love it's not personal it's not personal it's like a really really important piece of this gate you know like i said it's being love not being in love with someone or something you know it's they kind of talked about it. it's like it's cool love it's transcendent it just goes beyond what most humans think of when they think of love you know um and one of the, one of the famous quotes from Ra or who was the founder of human design was like you know we're not here to be loved but to be love so this one um if people are born at this time of year, there we have something called our incarnation cross. Again, there's so many layers to things where it's like, you know, how far do we get in on a podcast? But um, incarnation crosses are like a life's theme. And so everybody has one. And if you were born at this time of year on the on either of the equinoxes, the the spring or the fall, or the solstices, the summer or the winter. So the beginning of cardinal signs, right? Beginning of Aries season of cancer season labor season capricorn season they all start with the right angle cross of the vessel of love and so people that have that truly that's that's their mission they have all four of the transcendent love gates and they are really here to be and embody love as like this big concept so like i said i love it i have it this is actually where my my conscious mars is in my mars and pisces so um i have like you know a cluster of personal planets i've got i've got venus in 22 sun in 36 and mars in 25 it's like boom you know this this uh stellium this pisces stellium and so the Mars is really interesting. It's at 29 degrees. If you know astrology, that's the anoretic degree. It's like the final place that it can it can sit and really like in the final minutes before it would move into Aries, you know, and that that astrologically, that's a whole thing. But um in in human design, your Mars placement is the place you're meant to mature into and become powerfully wise over time in. And then also if you want to get into the gene keys, it's your EQ placement where it's about heart healing and the things that kind of, you know, your development between seven and 14 years old. So again, sorry, side note, if you go back and listen to episode one, which is this, you know, we're talking about 25 here, but this is like, we're just adding all the layers. So places that, you know, you can dig in and kind of look at and contemplate yourself. So anyway, I, I so feel this. I had and I talk about this on that first episode. I think I, I think I start crying. I can't remember. Right? It's spicy season. Hi guys. If you listen to the last one, you know. If you know, you know. Um, but I had this mystical experience. And every time I go to talk about it, I was like, it's it's simple, but like, oh my goodness, I I really was shown that truly everything is is love. Like it was just, and I'm gonna be careful, I'm really not gonna cry. Um it was the it the most ooh here it comes the most beautiful thing ever 
like ever, ever. And the most comforting feeling that I have ever felt in my entire life. Um, but the whole thing, you know, when I, when you talk about that, it's like a mystical experience. This is part of a mystical channel. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but you cannot force a mystical experience to happen. Right. And that's the whole thing. It's like when I went to bed that night and had this particular experience, like I had no idea that was going to happen, but I did. And it forever changed me, changed the way I see everything and um, really put me at ease and, and peace with just like life. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay. And really, it was like, but everything is a distraction, really, like keeping us away from love, you know? And it's so powerful. It heals. It's, it's the, it's truly like the fabric of our existence. Like, oh, I said I wasn't going to do this, but it's like, this isn't unlike 836, where I was like, oh, this is like, you know, sad stuff. Like, this is like beautiful. Like, this is, this is good tears. <laughs> Um, so the energy of this gate, you know, it's meant to awaken and empower others to be their own individual loving self. And I think I'm just talking about 36. It's like, what a beautiful transition from the darkening of the light at the very end of the astrological year, you know, at this end of Pisces season into like the rebirth that occurs at the equinox as we move into Aries. And it's like the innocent, you know, like love of spirit like that that's this amazing transition that happens here it's like that truly the rebirth into love when you've been in your darkest moments so in the gene keys the shadow of this is constriction the gift is acceptance and the city is universal love and he starts this one off saying if there is a single gene key among the 64 gene keys that captures the essence of the entire work it is the 25th key here lies the secret that men and women have always sought the secret of love here too lies the foil of love the 25th shadow of constriction constriction exists wherever love is absent and is the underlying source of all human suffering it is the self-perpetuating excuse me, it is self-perpetuating because to constrict life in yourself or in another is to welcome more suffering into your life. To be alive in a physical body can be experienced as the ultimate constriction, especially if your reality is rooted in fear. And then um, there's another book, The 64 Ways, which is really beautiful because it's more of a, it's a verbal contemplation on each of the keys. So it really reads differently. Um, and he and he talks about you know the the dilemma being anxiety, uh, and the it, basically everything is like you get you go from the shadow to the city. You know it's like by way of the gift. So the gift is really important in everything. You know people are like I'm trying to manifest the city. It's like no no no. The gift, the city is like so kind of above our everyday human understanding. But the gift is where we really you know if we aim for that, we're gonna we're going to transcend at some point. So the acceptance, right? Coming to terms with things as they are. So in that one, he really talks a lot about slowing down, you know, to notice the beauty of life and breathing and how important that is and, and leading us to the anxiety. We become too self-aware and that's where the, the anxiousness comes from. So very, very, it's a really beautiful book, very interesting um, how it gets explained. And, and it made me laugh because I was like, wow, like, I don't recall reading that particular piece in the book before, but I've been sitting on this idea probably, I don't know, in the last month or so where all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, oh, what I mentioned in, in the opening of this episode that I want to do these beauty breathing episodes that are these quick little, like, let's just really integrate keywords of these particular gene keys or gates as we go through them you know, the almost like positive affirmation and really just kind of have a couple of minutes to breathe and unconstrict yourself. Right. So I love that. Um, and then one of the things he goes on to say, and I think this is just really beautiful in the, in the acidic expression of this particular key in the book is this city describes the shift from the personal to the universal. Most of us think is of love as a personal connection between people or between us and something outside us. 
the feeling of love bridges that distance, bringing us closer into unison. Universal love lies in another dimensional field. It's the connective tissue that holds together everything. This is why we call it God. It's love. So again, Richard Rudd's talking about something that I personally experienced firsthand years ago. And yeah, I'm like, it's true. <laughs> I mean, like he's he's speaking the truth. So again, interesting to be like, wow, like look at where this look is located in the body graph, the G center, which is the chest, like the middle of us. And um, you know, it being about the lungs and constriction and grief. And that's exactly what happens here. I mean, think about like the time period in my life to go through that gene keys, um, you know, that process. And I'm like, yeah, like this is it very much lines up with certain things that happen in my life, losing certain people um, in that age range and really kind of experiencing grief for the first time at a, at a fairly young age, uh, really, really deeply, you know, and not just once, but a good few times. Um, she's not going to cry. <laughs> Um, anyway, so my notes right on on this, it's like it's part of a projected channel. It's meant to be seen, recognized, and invited. It's like, you know, I mentioned this being like the the priestess. And and I love that because high priestess is my birth card in tarot. It's like I, she's my girl. Um, but it's like, you know, she doesn't come to you, you know, it's like this this reserve refined energy. It's like, and and that's projected energy. It's like you post up be the queen, you know, like wait for people to come to you and seek out your wisdom and your advice and your inner knowing. So another really cool thing of 25 is that the presence of it is seen as the mark of like a healer. Um, there's a reference in another human design book about having tw gate 25 with an undefined or open spleen, which I have this. So again, it really resonates in that it gives you this powerful ability to heal even without any training or direction or guidance. Like you don't need a certificate, like you're simply healing with the power of love. And again, I, I'm like, I feel that really deeply. It just makes a lot of sense to me, um, which despite like, you know, my experience, like I'm a Reiki master. I've been, been trained in this years ago um, and have taught and things. And it's like, I just, it's so interesting to me, like other people get so hung up on the symbols or the lineage or the protocol or the invocation or the, you know, like the things you have to do and the things you have to say. And I'm always like, I just don't go there. I'm like with energy work, I'm just like, yo, it's love. Like that's it, plain and simple. You know, that's the universal life force that we're connecting to and just, you know, delivering, um, offering, infusing, being a conduit to for other people because we all are it. And it is us. Some people just feel that really strongly and they're like, get it, you know? And sometimes, you know, you need it. And sometimes you're the giver. So anyway, when I treat people, that's all I'm thinking. I'm like, I know people with body graphs. I know their, you know, air quotes issues. And I'm always just like, I'm sending love to those places within them. And that's like the real healing power. You know, it's like, it's pure, it's simple, it's innocent, right? This is the gate of innocence. I have innocence motivation in my human design too. I'm like, it's just, yeah, no agenda. It's like, it's all love. Um, you know, and again, I was lucky enough to be given that mystical experience that forever changed me. Like, I, I know it was gate 25. I'm like, I experienced gate 25 on a profoundly life-changing level. And, you know, like I said, I have to add, like, once I experienced it, my anxiety, my worries, my depression, everything just kind of like faded away. And I knew like really deep in my bones that like all is well, I, it's the best way I can describe it. It's just like, I don't know. It's so, it's just so interesting. So anyway, the programming partner for this one is gate 46, which is known as pushing upward. It's the gate of the determination of the self. And the keynote here is the love of the body, determination to follow through. 46 is known as one of the four love gates in human design. You know, again, so 25 is a love gate, 46 is a love gate. And this is all about having a love for your physical vessel, what it means to be in a body, to be embodied. You know, it is definitely the body aspect of mind, body, spirit connection. It's not vanity really so much as it's care for the vehicle that your soul gets to ride around in. And, 
you know, again, so this is going to be a bridge gate as well. It's going from Virgo to Libra, right? Virgo is very much about health, wellness, healing, and Libra is balance, beauty, and aesthetic, aesthetic appeal. So when it's, and I always just think it's like, it's not about one or the other, right? And that's, that's, to me, that's the beauty that I see in this. It's like, our bodies are our soul's temples. We want them healthy, yes. And we want them to be beautiful, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, an analogy, you know, I always think it's like you're gonna you're always gonna take care of it. It's like if you if you had that one, you know, nice car, but you knew it was your only one forever, you're really gonna like love on it, you know, you're gonna wash it, change the oil, get the tune-ups, all those things. Um so again, this is another one that's interesting because you definitely see you can see this one in people who are definitely like healers of like the physical body. And again, it's a lot of times, you know, like healing that relationship with your body within yourself, you know, first, and then being an example for other people. So um, the gate that completes the channel is gate 51. This is known as the arousing. It's the gate of shock. And this together, they form the channel of initiation. So I think of 51, and this is this is an Aries gate. So we're going to talk about this one here in the very near future. But I think of it like the Big Bang, you know, it's it is such an Aries energy, not afraid to go first, lead the way, dare to be different. And, you know, some of the low expression is like it can be very competitive, it needs to be first, um, doing things for shock value, you know, so on and so forth. But the high expression of it is like a magical ability to shock people out of their comfort zones you know so again um this is like the the fool and the warrior archetype of like leaping into the void you know waking people up slapping them across the face you know <laughs> like just wake up um so you know in this one uh I, here's what i found really interesting i don't know one i'm always i'm never not contemplating this stuff if you haven't already realized but one day it just sort of hits me. I'm like, oh, well, I have the gate 25 hanging and my husband, my daughter, and my son all have the, the opposite. They have the 51 hanging and together I'm like, well, they complete me. You know, they, we complete this channel together. And I was like, yeah, they're the ones that initiated me. You know, after I had my manifestor son, he's the youngest. That's when I had that experience. So it's been like, he's about to be six. So it's like, it wasn't long after, you know, so let's say this is like five and a half, maybe almost six years ago um, that I had that experience. And it was just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> it's all okay. It's all love. Um, and interestingly, you know, Ra Ruhu, who is the founder of human design, he had his son in gate 51. So he was definitely about shocking, surprising, and jolting people outside of their comfort zones. So, um, you know, when the two come together, we've got 51, which is the heart or the will or the ego center. You know, it's, it's called all of those things, and it's connecting to the G center, basically to challenge and push people to evolve. So, you, uh, you know, on one hand is like super competitive and the other side is like totally innocent and no agenda. And this is really about pushing yourself. If you have this whole channel, pushing yourself to do better in turn helps push others forward, but you can't make it happen. It's spontaneous. It has to come find you. You know, it's projected. Remember, I priestess post up, um, you know, it's like seek me out to be your guide to, or be your shaman to leap into the void and stretch beyond your limits. But, you know, like, even if you think about that, people talking about like ayahuasca and stuff, it's like, well, you seek a shaman out to like do those kinds of things. It's like somebody who's going to take you to those places, right? Um, so when the two come together to form the channel of initiation, it is the ego connecting to the self. You're being invited to respond to the things that life throws your way. You don't need to initiate it, interfere with it, try to make it happen. It just unfolds as it should. It's mystical. And it's like, wait to be invited. And then in, in the meantime, just be yourself. Because again, if you have this whole channel, it means you have your G-Center defined. So being yourself should be like a natural thing. Um, you know, and again, it's part of the individual centering circuit. So there's only two channels in it, the 3410, which I have the whole thing. And then I have half of this one, the, the 51 to 25, I've the 25. 
So it, individual centering is about empowering others through being, being love, being so strong on your center that you can be that human crystal, the human tuning for it, vibing in a certain frequency. It doesn't connect to the throat. So it's not about talking the talk. It's about walking the walk, right? You just exist a way for others to come meet you and entrain to your frequency, like be ready for you, you know, and actually side note here, I always feel like that about when people work with me. I had people years and then they'll be like, oh, I finally booked. And then they're like, oh my God, what was I waiting for? And it was like, you're ready now, you know, like it's, it's time. And, you know, it's like you get awakened to this amazing just such amazing stuff and it is life changing. But if you know, you're just if you're not if you're not ready yet, you're not ready. And that and I have to be patient with that too. <laughs> you know, where you're like, all right, high priestess, baby, just post up. So um yeah. Then one fit the so so the difference, like I'm saying I have the 3410, that's really like being being love and being yourself. And 5125, the channel of initiation that we're talking about here is specifically about transforming the way one takes advantage of the world we live in. And to quote the Red Book, it's simply by doing what is correct for them, they inspire and empower others to be themselves. So those of us with the centering circuit you know, these channels here, these two channels, it's our responsibility to be centered, healthy, and aligned so we that we can empower and inspire others. And, you know, they talk again, the centering circuit to quote raw one more time. It's like, it has unprecedented power over all other circuitry and it brings about empowerment in those who are around it. People with this energy have an aura that creates a kind of vortex around them. And he says, the centering circuit is a power that condition that can condition even the even very tribal people into the possibility of loving themselves. So, like I said, I I always go on about this because this is about my work. It's like if you vibe with me, I'm helping you love yourself, you know. And then I think about my friend, Angels Ashley. So she has she we're kind of we're gonna have this funny little like neither one of us has the whole both pieces. Um, I have the thirty four ten and gate 25 she's got the 51 25 and gate 34 <laughs> so it's like you know kind of the, the little chunk there um but it's so funny because i'm like wow this is some you know we we vibe in that sense of like she's helping people you know kind of like um transcend what they're doing you know like like take go to the next level right and i'm over here being like and i'm helping people like realize like loving and accepting themselves um and so those are, like i said those are the two halves the exploration and initiation so it's like initiate people and explore like together and that is the thing that just is, is awesome it's like it really wakes people up to to all of this magical stuff in the world so astrologically this would be an aries aries uh conjunction or in my case like i have the pisces part of 25 um it's pisces aries like you know that's in conjunct and this is also happening in the first quarter of the wheel which is um purpose fulfilled through mind it's it's the quarter of initiation so do you have this gate in your chart um if you do g center is the big diamond at the middle of the chest and 25 is off on the right hand side aiming down toward the little triangle the little heart will ego center so if it's red black or red and black you have it defined somewhere in your chart and if it's white, you do not have it, but look on the other side, maybe you have the 51, you might be getting that full channel, or maybe you don't have any of it. You're still going to experience it through the transits, through other people in your life. Um, but I'm always curious, you know, let, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And of course, I'll be back soon with more of this episode. If you got something out of it, would love it if you leave it a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It just helps it get out to more people. If you would like to learn more human design, of course, my master class is $11. Work with me one on one. Golden Experience Guide is coming, you know, so on and so forth. There's so many things. There's so many things in the work. So just stay tuned. Um, yeah, you can follow me over on Instagram at Michaela McLean. Get my free 23 page guide to human design basis. That that link is also in the show notes. I am redesigning that. I just looked at it. I've been it's on my to do list, and I started messing with it, and I was like, oh yeah, no, no, we need this needs to be pretty. 
I didn't make it actually. I mean, I did. I wrote it, but somebody else put it together for me a, a long time ago, you know, and adore that person. But I'm just like, oh, I wanted this to really reflect, uh, reflect something that I want to see. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to zhuzh it up a bit. So anyway, there you go. Happy Equinox, right? Um, and until next time, have a beautiful day.